Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Misha, Dr. Misha. I am Ukrainian vet who currently lives and works in the United States in Las Vegas. In this video, I want to talk to you about the preparation to the CPA exam. So I'm going to share my personal experience about the preparation. We're not going to talk about the exam itself because we're not allowed to do it, but I can and I'm allowed to talk about how I study for this exam and how you can survive <laughs> during the preparation to this exam. Let's go. Uh, the first thing that I would like to discuss is the time. How long does it take to prepare for this exam and when do you need to start your preparation? As you know, it can take you a long period of time to get your exam scheduled. For example, for me, it took more than uh, one and a half years to get my exam scheduled and I was waiting for a long period of time. I can say that I started my prepa preparation very slowly a year before the exam, but really hard I started to study maybe like four months before the exam. And the last two months before the exam, I did like very hard. Compared to BCEC exam or NAVL exam, I didn't took any vacation or any uh, extra days off. For example, for BCEC exam, I used to work four days a week and three days I had off. For the NAVL exam, uh, I took six months vacation, so and I haven't worked at all, I just started. For the CP, it's a little bit different story. Because I'm working on the temporary license right now, so I'm dealing with the cases, it's gonna be the same cases that you're gonna get in your CP exam. And this is some part of my preparation already, and this is my advice number one to you. Uh, get your temporary license as soon as possible, and this is something that's gonna be very, very useful for you for your CP preparation. So um, I'm working every day, I'm dealing with cases, different situations, you have to read every day because you cannot like know everything, so you still need to read and you're gonna study every day. And every day after I come back from work, I just do my extra preparation for the CP. And I can say, as I said, about six to four months, um, I, I've done it like regularly and the last two months I, I've done it like very, very hard. So this is about the timing. So let's talk about the sections itself. Before you start your preparation to any section, please uh, check more or manual of administration. This is a PDF file that ECFVG provides you with all necessary requirements. For example, if we talk about the small animal section, they're gonna tell you exactly what disease they expect you to know, and they're gonna describe you in details what you're gonna deal with in the sections itself. So my first advice is something that I already mentioned is temporary license. Believe me guys, it's gonna be very, very useful for you because every day you're gonna deal with the same cases that you're gonna get in your exam. So uh, that means every day you learn, every day you have to read and you get some extra information. And this is already the preparation. So you can send a lot of time, you can have a little bit more money and also you get the experience. It's amazing. So if you cannot do that, please make sure you know all disease that they want you to know. Make sure you know all differentials, uh, you know uh, how to treat, how to start with, you know some tips on the blood work, for example, how to find this or another disease, also on the x-rays, ultrasound, etc, etc. So be prepared for the disease, for the disease what you can read. I used clinical advisor, I used uh, small animal procedures um, emergency cases, uh, so book about small animal emergency procedures, and I used WIN, this is an uh, online portal, uh, for veterinarians, you can also find that and, and read over there. So this is, was my part for the small animal uh, preparations. Plus, you also need to know the procedures itself for the small animal section. And where can you find the information? Again, very easy. Many different books you can find online where you can read about the procedures. And in more, they're going to tell you exactly what procedures they want you to know. So it's not hard. You check what procedures they want you to know. You can even Google it, you can watch the videos, you can find in the books how exactly to do it in the proper way with all sterility, what equipment to use. And you make the notes for yourself and you're done. So it's not gonna take you so much time. Please do that and, and then you're gonna be prepared for the procedures. So uh, you have one case, you have one emergency case and you have the procedures. Uh, for emergency case, it's a book about uh, uh, small animal emergency procedures. For the cases, it's clinical advisor or win plus your experience in the hospital. And for the procedures, again, you can read in the books, you can find online, you can find in YouTube. So I hope this, this is like a good summary and you know how to be prepared for the small animal section. So the next section we're gonna talk about, it's a surgery section, uh, one of my favorite. And I know many people have uh, like problem with that. So what options do we have? Of course, you need to get some experience. 
you need to know exactly how to perform the surgery, the space surgery, the way that they want you to perform it. So of course you read more, manual administration. You need to read in the books, in American books, how exactly to do the surgery, what suture material to use and when, what type of suture you need to use, etc., etc. So you need to know all this description and why, uh, so on and so far. Also, you need to know the sterility and all that stuff. But the main question where to get the experience, right? Uh, because many people, they graduate and they move to US and they don't have this experience. Of course, I know some people who can go back to your homeland. So this is the option number one. You can go back to your country, get some experience over there, make sure your hands are not shaky anymore. And then uh, when you feel comfortable, when you know what you're doing, everything what you need, you just need to follow uh, like the perfect instruction with a, with a spay procedure. So to do it this way, how they want you to do it. So on the YouTube, you can find many different videos from different American universities where they demonstrate how to do the spay procedure. So in most of them, they do it the perfect way. This is uh, some standards way in United States and you just need to do the procedure the same way. So this is the option number one for you. Second option, I know some boot camps in some other countries outside of the US, you can also participate. I haven't done that and I heard from many different people, they say they teach you the surgeries, the space surgeries, but not the same way that you need to do on your exam. So again, it's a good option for you to get some experience to make sure you feel comfortable, comfortable. but at the same time, you need to know for sure how to do the surgery the, the perfect way, right? The way that the like institute here wants you to do it. And the option number three, and again, something that I always recommend and I'm gonna repeat myself again and again, it's temporary license. Why? Because you can do these procedures on the daily basis in the hospital. You have the doctors with the license who can also always help you, correct you. You have also like fresh graduate doctors sometimes. They just finished the school and they know exactly what professors told them at the university. They can always correct you. So you get your experience at the same way you know exactly how to do the procedure uh, the way that Americans do, right? So uh, either go to your homeland, either uh, participate in the boot camp, or get a temporary license and practice and learn the procedure. If you need to find how exactly to do it, please use the books. There are many different books and also YouTube, but from the like approved uh, universities, right? Uh, like American universities and do it the way that they want you to do or the way that they demonstrate it to you. The next section, and it's one of the most difficult section, if we're talking about like experience from different students, uh, it's anesthesia section. Again, what options do we have in order to get prepared? Of course, you can read the books. You can use the YouTube videos where you can check uh, machines, for example, anesthetic machi machines, how to work with them. So make sure you have uh, the theoretic knowledge. Uh, what you're gonna do if the uh, blood pressure goes up or blood pressure goes down. So you need to know all, all this theory. Plus, you need to practice, so you need to deal with anesthesia every day. And here's the question, how to do it? And it's almost the same like you do with the surgery. Even either you go to your homeland, or you go and participate in the boot camps, or you get a temporary license, you work on the temporary license and you do it. Or here, again, the, the better option that we have, uh, you can work as a technician. There are many states where you are allowed to work as a technician. Even if you're not allowed to work as a veterinary tech, you can work as an assistant and you always close to the uh, anesthetic machines. You see what license tags do, you see what doctors do, and you can learn from them, you can ask questions. So for sure you need to work in the hospital. This is a recommendation that we don't need to even discuss that. Uh, you need to be in the hospital. If you don't uh, work in the hospital because you don't get paid enough, I understand that. So because you need, you need to leave here, you need to do some other job, uh, yeah, it, it happens. But before the exam, make sure you work in the hospital or even volunteer. So you, you touch the anesthetic machine, you know, like how to use it, what to do how to measure the tubes, what type of <laughs> tubes do you have, etc., etc., right? And catheters and all, uh, all that. So you need to read more, see all requirements, make sure you like use everything the proper way with the sterility and all that. Plus, plus get the experience. So what I personally have done, um, I used to work as a technician uh, since I moved to United States. And after I switched to the profession, uh, to, to the temporary license, I used to work as a doctor, but I can say I was dealing and I'm still dealing with anesthetic machines every day and I'm doing it every day. So this is something that helped me a lot uh, to get prepared to my exam. So, and this is something that I also recommend to you.
So the next section is gonna be large animals. Probably we're gonna combine so horse and, and bovine and small uh, ruminants. Uh, again, it depends. I know some people, they have a good experience uh, with large animals and they don't have any problems with that. Uh, some people, they don't have any experience at all. So what can you do? Uh, again, you need here, based on the requirements, you need to know some theoretical parts. Settings card, they provide you again, the disease that you need to learn. So this is gonna be your responsibility. How are you gonna do it? Um, it's up to you, I can tell you how I've done it. So you have the list of the disease, what I've done. I remember that from many of them, I remember from Navli, but in my head, uh, so first of all that I had, I had uh, differentials. So for example, if we're talking about asper, resp upper respiratory disease in the horses, I knew already what it's gonna be on my differentials. If it's gonna be some GI, what is gonna be differentials. So same for small ruminants, same for bovine. Okay, so you need to know that. Then when you have this list, it's very easy. You can either use the Merck manual, even online, and type the disease and just read about it, make some tiny notes. Or you can use some like books. It depends what you're gonna find. What I've done, uh, I had some notes from the Navli. What I was preparing for the Navli, I had like good, good uh, notes. Plus, I used Mark Manual for the preparation for the disease, where I wasn't sure what to do and how to do it. And for the procedures itself, because you also need to do some procedures, you can either uh, go to YouTube. Again, something very easy when you don't have time. You go to YouTube, you see how to do it exactly. You can participate in any boot camps. You can do it in US, you can do it outside or of the US or again in your homeland country. Or you can also ask some uh, large animal hospitals in your state and ask them you know, either to work there as assistant or volunteer and like shadow the doctor and see what they do, ask them the question. You know that American uh, people, they always like very open and plus, especially people from uh, from a large animal sector, I would say they like even more open and I'm pretty sure they're gonna help you and teach you if, if you ask for it. So don't hesitate to ask for help. If you need more experience, please do it, it's very important. So um, for procedures, again, either contact the hospitals and just shadow them or go to YouTube or go to your homeland. So you need to know what you're doing. Plus for the disease, it's nothing new. Again, I repeat myself, uh, you need to learn. You need either to use Merck manual for the preparation, this is something that what I've done, or any other sources, any other, other books for the preparation. Also, don't forget about the sport. It's also very important to keep your mental health like clear. Uh, so in my apartment complex, we have beautiful gym. We have pool, so don't forget about the fun as well. Meet your friends. Of course, it's very important because CP is something that is, yeah, kind of change your life right after this exam. But again, life is still going. And even if you don't pass from the first attempt, you still have chance to do it again. Uh, yeah, just don't forget to enjoy the life. And yeah, it's not the end of the world. Just like any regular exam, be focused, enjoy it and keep going. So the last two sections that we have left are uh, necropsy and radiology. So necropsy. To be honest, I've done my, uh, the necropsy last time when I was in vet school and it was a long time ago. And again, here in US, even when you work as a tech, even when you work as a doctor, you don't have a chance to do the necropsy every day. Uh, of course, if you, want, if you work on the temporary license, sometimes you have pets euthanized or died and you can ask the owners if you can perform the necropsy. You check the requirements again on the MOA. You can type in YouTube. There are a couple like very good videos with the explanation from American universities. And you can see how exactly they, they do the necropsy and you can do it. Uh, but I, I believe it's, even when you work as a doctor, it's not so common to, to get a case, you know, to do it. So what I have done, um, I, I used YouTube. So I used YouTube because uh, over there I was able to find good videos about the necropsy, exactly how to do it. Uh, I checked some books. Uh, so over there you need to know exactly like description of the organs and what change you, you can get. And also, uh, yeah, working on the temporary license a couple times, we had cases where owners asked us to do the necropsy and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, she did the necropsy and I was able to like shadow her and help her. And I, ch I had my MOA or again, requirements from the ECFEG and I just used everything what they want me to do on the exam. I've done the same uh, with, with this pet and I've done this necropsy the same way that they want me to do. And this is how I, how I study for the necropsy. So. Um, I can say that necropsy and radiology shouldn't take you so long compared to the uh, other sections, but still you have to take it very serious. Like each section is very important and take, please take it very seriously. And yeah, make sure you know in your head 
uh, before any section you're gonna go in you haven't you had the plan like step by step uh, what are you gonna do so I come into the room they want me to do this this and that my first step is gonna be to do this my second step is gonna be to do this this and that so it's very important it's not only about the preparation it's also about your mentality and your mental health to know exactly what you're gonna do and what's gonna be your steps when you're gonna be in the exam okay so please be prepared not only with your knowledge but also mentally so be ready that you know exactly you know all requirements and you just go there and you do it the last section is the radiology so if you work as a tech assistant or even the doctor you are dealing with the x-rays every day so please Check the requirements again, that's what I told you. Every time you need to check the requirements from the ACFG, what exactly to do. Plus, uh, make sure you know how to do each part of the body, how to take an x-ray in the proper way. Don't forget the markers, don't forget uh, the protection, and you should be good. If you cannot find uh, like the videos or description on the YouTube or even like in the Google, uh, you probably heard about IDEX and we have Antec, we have IDEX and Antec. And I was able to find on Antec images, uh, so you don't need any password for that. So uh, Antec website, they provide you the videos with description how to do the x-rays in the proper way. And this is something uh, what you can study from, and this is something that I've done. I checked the videos from Antec, how exactly to do the x-rays on different parts of the body with all descriptions. So, and yeah, it was, it was enough. And uh, yeah, just make sure you follow all the requirements, you know how to take the each uh, body part and yeah use the protection and don't forget your markers and you should you should be you should be good something that i haven't mentioned to you at the beginning uh, cp exam it's not like you take some time and you study for it and you forget cp is kind of part of your life so you need to study everywhere it <laughs> doesn't matter where you are i was studying in the car during traveling i was studying at work i was studying at home i was studying by the pool I was studying in the office and yeah as a doctor you need to study every day no matter what so and cp is something like that it's something about that if you are in the in the medicine and veterinary medicine you know that you you need to learn every day and this is just some normal part of your life and don't push too much on yourself but at the same time uh, work hard be self-disciplined and this is in my opinion some uh some key you know to be successful in, in general in life and also to succeed in this exam specifically so guys that was a video about my preparation to the cpa exam uh again nothing from the exam itself only my experience how to study and what i have done in order to finish those exams i hope it was useful for you please let me know if you have any questions uh, write your comments down below and uh, smash the subscribe button and i'm gonna see you in the next videos thank you take care